Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to create your own animated texture. In order to create this animated paper texture, first we need some paper, right? So I'm actually using this 400 series paper, and the reason I'm doing that is because it's a little bit thicker. If you have something like construction paper, that should work for this experiment as well. Once we get the paper crumbled up, we're gonna take some high res images with my DSLR that we're then gonna import into Lightroom to do some light editing before we import it into After Effects to make it move. And the benefit of doing this is once we're in After Effects, we're gonna throw a couple expressions on the layer and it's gonna allow us to have a looping texture as long as we want. In order to start this process, I brought in some little helpers in order to get my process started with crumpling the paper up. Why? Crumple it up. Why? Go crazy. Why do you want me to crumple it up? Just crumple it up. Keep going. Great. So I've opened up Adobe Lightroom Classic, and if I go down here to import, it's gonna populate for me here and I just have to navigate to where my photos live. Let's just import a handful of these. I wanna make the thumbnails a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing here. So this is the paper plane first crumple and these last couple are the ones that I actually wanna work with. I took one a little bit tighter here because uh, I wasn't sure if that was an extra added texture that I wanted to use. I don't think it is. So I'm just gonna skip over that. I'm just gonna apply these two, or take these two. So if I highlight the rest of these, I can right click and remove photos. So we're gonna work with these two. So if I go up here to develop, and I need to crop this uh, to fit just the area that I want to keep for my texture. So we're first gonna do that by going up here to this crop tool and I'm just gonna click a corner here and hold shift, drag down, and then it automatically defaults back to the hand and then I can grab it and move it wherever I want. So I'm just trying to fit, I can, I can bleed a little bit. Um, and that should be fine because I can still control more of this within After Effects. So, I hit enter to finalize that. And if I hit auto, it's gonna make some auto adjustments, but I don't really want it to be super bright. I like the contrast, because really what I'm going for is all these creases, all the dark spots where there's maybe some shadowing or anything like that. That's really what's gonna jump out and allow me to make this texture look really nice. So we can pull down some of the highlights. I actually don't want the the shadows up that high. Because you can see the further I pull this down, the more texture it really gives it. So I, I want some pretty good texture here. I can leave that up there. And the other thing is that we can we can really drum up the texture even more with this texture slider and clarity slider. So if we bring it up, you you can really see the difference here. It starts to get into some of the grainy grainy elements. I don't think I'm going to take it all the way up because I can play with the contrast even more with an After Effects. I do want it to be uh, up a little bit more than it was initially. So that feels I guess a different look. Depends on the look you're going for, I guess, uh, because this, this could be an interesting look too, having this super smooth and having it overly textured. So I'm going to fall kind of right here. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this saturation down because ultimately I'm I'm really going to want mostly a black and white image here because I will get to the point of using it as a mode within After Effects. All right, so now that I have this done, I can actually go down to this and right click and go up here to develop settings and copy my settings. And I want to turn off the crop. I want to make sure the crop is not selected. So everything else is fine. And I'll hit copy, 
And if I go to this image, I'm going to right click, develop settings and paste settings. And I want to crop this myself so that I can get, get it to fall in the place that I want. Little more just so I have a little bit of hangover there. Cool. And then when I'm ready, hit enter. And we have our two pieces of paper. So if I highlight both of them, go up to file, export. And I'm just going to export these to my drive. All right. I'm all set with Lightroom. So let's close that. So now I'm in After Effects and I've imported my paper textures into this folder. And what we're going to do is in this texture comp, I'm going to go up here and create a shape layer. Let me turn off my stroke. And when I turn on my fill, I'm just going to make it a white sheet of paper. And if I double click, it's going to give me a white background. So now if I drop my image of my texture on top, if I zoom out of the composition, you're going to see it's much larger. So the whole point of taking the picture is to make it high res because that's going to give us a lot more room to wiggle this piece of paper all over the place and make it feel like it's, it's really moving. So what I'm going to do on here on this is open up my position properties and I've gone into my preferences within After Effects and already pre-split these, which is a newer option within After Effects. So if you haven't done that, you can right click on position and separate dimensions. Uh, but I've already had, I already have them split here. So what we're gonna do is add an expression. It's gonna be the same for both the X and the Y, except for the differences in our numbers. So if I Alt and click on the stopwatch, we are going to add an expression and we're gonna start with posterize time. And let's start with eight. And this is gonna give basically every eight frames, it's gonna select the position that it's in and it'll hold for another eight frames. And then I'm gonna write random. And inside random, you want two random numbers. So what I usually like to do here is Disable the expression by clicking this equal sign so it has a, a knot through it. And just dragging this from, since I'm on the X, let's see how far I can go. So basically 1700 to, let's call it 200. Great. So I'm going to click on this and 200, comma, 1700. Why don't I play this back for you real quick, just so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so gives you, I don't wanna, f let's go up to 50, so you can see these, these moving here. All right, so it's going back and forth, back and forth. Now, I'm gonna delete posterize time for a second, just so you can see what that does. If I just have it on here, you see it's moving every frame. And it's, it just gets to be extra chaotic. So I'm going to undo so I can get that posterized time back. And it kind of gives it that stop motion-y type feel. All right, so now we're going to go to the Y position. And I'll click on the stopwatch and paste the same thing. We're going to do random. And let's just take a guess and just say we're going to go 200 to 1500. So let me back out so we can see our our image here, right? The outline of our image. So if I turn this off, I want to make sure that, and eh, maybe we'll get a touch of that in there, sure. So we can say 1200 at the top and negative 100 at the bottom. So we can adjust this to say negative 100 and 1200. All right, so when we click off of here, this automatically turns back on. And you're going to see this kind of go in all sorts of different directions here. 
And if I drag through this, it's just picking a random number with both the X and the Y separately and returning that value to us. So now that we have that set up, the other thing I usually like to do is add a levels effect to this to play up the, the lights and the darks a little bit more. So let's double click on levels, apply that. And I'm gonna bring the blacks in just to push this even more. And you can play with the gamma here in the middle a little bit too. If I push the whites a little bit more towards the, the left, the darks, and then bring the darks in. You can play with that to taste. So if I then also go and add the multiply, let's change the color of this shape layer to maybe like a blue. Let's see what that looks like. You have your texture. And the good thing about doing it this way is as long as your comp is, is as random as it will go. So by adding some randomness to the texture itself, you won't run out and have to also run like a loop out expression or anything like that on top of this.